All right, welcome back. We're just coming back from a little break. This is SAT Writing and Language Crash Course Day 2, Part 2. And we're on uh, PSAT Practice Test Number 1 on the Writing and Language section. Uh, who did the last question? Was that Ava? I think it was. Yeah, I think you it was. You did the last one? Yeah, okay. So, Caroline, you are up next. Go ahead and just read that next um, sentence. Lunar Farming has its skeptics. Go ahead and read that, please. Lunar farming has ex has its skeptics who are not sure of the method's efficiency. Yeah, efficacy there, which means uh, effectiveness. Fancy word for effectiveness. Okay. okay. Hmm. Caroline, do you know what rule they're testing us on here for question number 30? Um, is it number four, like keeping it simple? It is keep it simple. I'm very impressed. Yes. Yes. Guess what the right answer is? D. It's D. Absolutely. Do you guys see that? Why is this? Why, yes. What What part of keep it simple is this? It's Caroline. like repeating itself. Totally repetitive. Right? Because what's a skeptic? People are not sure. <laughs> yeah, people who aren't sure about something. So, and that's, I would describe the skeptic as a commonly understood term. It's not real advanced or technical or anything like that. You know, I don't know if a kindergarten would know what a skeptic is, but I think the average reader would know what exactly what that is. You don't need to define it there. Nothing is added by saying skeptics who have yet to be convinced. And in general, we see something like, again, sort of like the rule of three. If you, uh, you know, if you see three with answer choice with a certain characteristic and one without it, it's probably the one without it, even if you weren't able to identify the rule. We see here with the three where they define what a skeptic is and one that doesn't. It's just keep it simple, avoiding unnecessary repetitive statements. Any questions about 30? Nope. No? Nope. nope. Great job, Caroline. Great job recognizing that. Blaze, you're next. Recalling advice. Alrighty. Recalling advice he received on the best lunar time to plant potatoes. An English farmer says his first reaction was hoopla. Yeah, okay. Current mainstream. Oh, do you want to keep going? No, no, you keep going, please. Okay, awesome. Current mainstream agriculture does not factor the moon into their practices, so the concept might seem qu quaint or irrational. Hmm. 31. What are they testing us on here, Blaze? Oh, definitely uh, the correct, you know, possessive uh, word or contraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Choose the right word in context, possessives. Okay. And how are the answer choices different? Um, well, there's, it is, and then it's, um, let me see what else. I don't think, the, uh, no change is probably not a good option. Yeah, because, why not? I agree. Because when I read it, it, for, it didn't really sound correct, but also reading it again. What's the it issue? It doesn't, uh, it doesn't match the number. Yeah, right. It's all, you can also, also argue to make it match number because we're talking about the practices of who or what. Who, well, that's a question. Whose practices are we talking about? Oh, <laughs> um, the current mainstream. Current. Oh, wait, no. The, the, oh, wait, do, oops, the agriculture does not factor the moon, so. Uh, not the moon's practice. The moon doesn't have any practices. The moon doesn't really do, I mean, the moon doesn't practice anything. So would it be the mainstream? I would say it's current mainstream agriculture. Mainstream is a uh, an adjective describing agriculture. Actually, both the current and mainstream. Current mainstream okay, agriculture okay. is the thing, right? We're talking about the practices of current mainstream agriculture. Does that make sense? Yes, I see. Yeah. Uh, and is current mainstream agriculture, is that singular or plural? That would be singular. It's singular, right? I mean, it may, may be made up of a lot of people, but it's current mainstream agriculture is a singular thing. So we need a singular form. So I know right off the bat we can eliminate... You know, we already said A. What else can we eliminate? Uh, definitely B, because B. In moon into those practices. No, uh, right. no, yeah. Yeah. And it's plural, and we need a singular here. So is it uh, C or D? Um, it would be D, because it's possessive, and yeah. Yeah, it, that matches the number. Yeah. Plug it in. If, if you're tempted by C, and some students will be tempted by because they're like, oh, possibly possessive, and I need possessive here, right? And that's as far as they get. Remember, change its there and your into the two words. Plug it in with its changed into the two words it is. 
Okay, so it would be current mainstream agriculture does not factor the moon into it is practices. Ah, so ah okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's not serious. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Good. Questions about that? Anyone? Nope. No? Okay, great. Let's keep rolling. Ava, go ahead and read Additionally Lunar Farming. Additionally, lunar farming is based in astrology as opposed to astronomy. And no extensive scientific studies have yet been conducted that measure the moon's overall influence on farming. So supporters continue to wait for their practices to be verified, verified scientifically. Hmm, okay. And read question 32, please. The writer wants to conclude the paragraph effectively while also reinforcing the point that skepticism towards lunar farming still exists. Shares this goal. Hmm. Okay. Wow, this is specific. You're getting some tough questions here, Ava. Very specific questions. What answer choice are we looking for? Which one? Uh, one that effectively uh, wait, yeah? <laughs> concludes the uh, point while uh -huh. also reinforcing that skepticism towards lunar farming still exists. Yeah, that's awful specific. we got to yeah. effectively conclude the paragraph and reinforce the point that skepticism toward lunar farming still exists. Okay. Uh, let's read the underlined portion again, see if that does those two things. So supporters continue to wait for their practices to be verified scientifically. Does that conclude the paragraph effectively and reinforce the point that skepticism toward lunar farming still exists? I, I guess so. Supporters continue to wait for their practices to be verified scientifically. It doesn't show much um, skepticism. Yeah, it doesn't, does it? Now, it may be like a reason why some people might be skeptical, but those are different things, aren't they? To re mm -hmm. right? It's not reinforcing the point that skepticism still exists. Right? Yeah. Ooh, I'm not a big fan of A. Do we want to eliminate it or keep it? I guess eliminate it. I, th I think we can eliminate it. I mean, it just doesn't do the second half. I, I don't like A. Go ahead and read B. Just the <laughs> Sorry. Good. You're good. Uh, and therefore, no sound scientific data on the subject exists to date. Does that uh, conclude the paragraph effectively and reinforce the point skepticism toward lunar farming still exists? There's definitely skepticism. Where does it reinforce the point that skepticism toward lunar farming still exists? That there is no scientific data on the subject, so, but it isn't. So where like does that reinforce the point that skepticism toward lunar farming still exists? I don't know. Do you see my point here? Yes. <laughs> I mean, like, you're sort of making a logical jump. And it's a very reasonable jump. Like, that may be reason for someone to be skeptical, but does that reinforce the point that skepticism toward lunar farming still exists? No. Not really. It's tempting, but it, it just doesn't do that. I mean, again, we're trying to directly address the question. I, I don't like B. Try C. Yet many continue to practice lunar farming. Okay, does that conclude the paragraph effectively and reinforce the point that skepticism toward lunar farming still exists? There's no skepticism in that mm. at all. No, not even close. There's not even hinting at it like, like B does. I don't like, boy, I hope D works. Go ahead and read answer choice D. Leading many to conclude that the practice is based on folklore, not fact. Does that uh, conclude the paragraph effectively while also reinforcing the point skepticism toward lunar farming still exists? Yes. Absolutely. That hits it head on. Does that make sense? Yes. Leading many to believe it's nonsense. That's, that's the skeptics right there. Very clearly. Any questions about 32? Nope. Nope. That's not easy, is it? B is so tempting. So many kids are going to pick B. Don't do it. Make sure you directly address the question. If you do that alone, you'll get a big score increase if you can directly address the question. All right. Great job, Ava. Caroline, Stillman says. Okay. Stillman says, we are of the mind that you accept or believe by choice. Indeed, despite his doubts, this skeptical English farmer wound up planting his tomatoes according to the lunar cycle and claims they were the best I have ever tasted. Agricultural Professor Jennifer Kaufman has a similar response to Ferua's bounty in Italy. 
smell this rosemary, she says, smell how amazingly fragrant, fragrant that is. Okay, great. Go ahead and read question 33, please. Okay, which choice gives an additional supporting example that emphasizes the importance of the senses in judging the success of the lunar farming method? Oh, super specific question again. Okay, which answer choice are we going for here? What are we looking for? Um, which, um, gives an additional supporting example. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that does what? That does what? You're absolutely <laughs> right. I mean, so you gotta read it. Go ahead. Okay, the emphasize the importance <laughs> of the senses in judging the success of the lunar farming method. Oh, okay, right? It's not one. Which one do you like the best? No. You gotta <laughs> pick the one that gives an additional supporting example that emphasizes the importance of the senses in judging the success of lunar farming. Whew. Right. Read answer choice A. Let's see if it does that. Um, smell this rosemary, she says. Smell how amazingly fragrant that is. Okay, does that give an additional supporting example that emphasizes the importance of the senses in judging the success of the lunar farming method? I think it does. I think so, right? What sense? Uh, smell. Clearly. That's okay, that's pretty good. Let's try the others, though. Try B. She has taken photographs of the grapevines and landscape. Mm. Does that give an additional supporting example that emphasizes the importance of the senses in judging the success of the lunar farming method? Um, yes. How so? Uh, seeing. Where does it emphasize the importance of seeing? Oh. Yeah, I mean, I just assumed when they said photographs like you're seeing it but like does that emphasize the importance of the senses in judging the success really of the lunar farming method no i mean it's loosely related to sight because photographs you have to see a photograph but does that example emphasize the importance of the senses in judging the success of the lunar farming method no no it does not do you see the do you see the difference there Yes. Between directly addressing the question and sort of generally kind of loosely addressing the question. Mm -hmm. You've got to be specific in how you address it. Not just to the general topic, oh, that's sight. So, yes, that sounds good. No, 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 no. It doesn't emphasize the importance of the senses in judging the success of the lunar farming method. It doesn't. B is gone. What about C? Okay. She takes careful notes about Furua's farming methods, asking Furua to... Classify how he prepares the soil. Okay, does that provide an additional supporting example that emphasizes the importance of the senses in judging the success of the lunar farming method? No. <laughs> no, it does not. No, there's nothing, not even hinting at a sense there. I don't like D or C. Go ahead and read D for me, please. Okay, she dips, the, she dips bread into Ferrua's olive oil as he explains a soil preparation he does in the fall. Hmm. Does that give an additional supporting example that emphasizes the importance of the senses judging the success of the lunar farming method. No. It does not. But I have a confession to make when I did this this uh, practice test the first time. I think I picked a D. <laughs> I totally picked D. Why did I pick D? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Any idea, either of you, why I picked D? Uh, no. <laughs> I, was, I was hungry. <laughs> and I was like... Oh, that sounds so good. Like, I just had, like, images of bread being dipped in olive oil, and it made me hungry, and I thought about tasting it. So that, I, just went, I went with D. Like, it just kind of stood out. And that, but does it emphasize the importance of the senses? It doesn't. Where does it address taste? It doesn't. Not at all. It inspires the imagination, inspires your sense of hunger, but it, it doesn't address the importance of the senses. Like, answer, look at answer A again. Look at it. I mean, come on, smell this rosemary, she says. Smell how amazingly fragrant that is. I mean, come on. Hits it head on. Right? Compare that to D. So, you know, emphasize the importance of the senses, senses so much more directly. Okay? Does that make sense? Yep. Yes. yes. Okay. Great. Answer the question being asked. Do it and you will, you will be good. Great job. Uh, Blaze, you're up next. Let's see if I want to finish this practice test. I want to get all the way through this passage, so let's rock and roll. Blaze, lay it on me, beginning with the uh, title. All right. Recipes for History. The Sosmary Cookbook Collection? Yeah, why not? Sounds good. Okay, so, so, I'll say Sothmary. Okay. All right. In 1990, Chef Louis Sothmary, a voracious collector of cookbooks, donated approximately 
approximately 20,000 culinary artifacts to the University of Iowa Library. The gift included more than 100 manuscript recipe books, collections of recipes handwritten by the people who used them. Aha! Go ahead and read question 34, please. Alrighty. The writer is considering deleting the underlined portion, ending the sentence with a period. Should the writer make this decision, or this deletion? Hmm. Okay, let's read it. Um, let's read it without the um, underlined portion. So let's let's. So we've read it with it. Let's read it without it. Let's go. So, uh, so take it from the gift included more than 100 manuscript recipe books, and then just read the next sentence. Okay, so the gift included more than 100 manuscript recipe books. The manuscripts, some of which date back to the 17th century, are in are invaluable resource for food for historians as well as the general public. Okay. What is your instinct there, Blaze? Should the writer make this deletion? Yes or no? Um, hmm. What definitely makes the transition between, like, manuscript and the you know the last sentence and the next sentence a little bit smoother having and having it, it or it, deleting it um deleting it okay so i would say yes he should delete okay. it. okay great so let's uh test answers a and b don't worry about c and d right now all right read a for me please Alrighty. yes because the underlying portion detracts from the paragraph's focus on the south american collection Okay, so and, does, we'll stop. Does the underlined portion detract from the paragraph's focus on the Zathmary collection? Hmm. Let's see, collections of recipes here. Um, I mean, slightly, but not, like, majorly. Yeah, not, not, but, I mean, does, I mean, it explains what it is, right? I mean, it's, mm -hmm. I don't like, yeah, just, I can't, okay. I can't say, I can't say yes, I don't like it. Try B. Yeah. Okay. Yes, because the information in the underlying portion is provided in the previous sentence. Is the information in the underlying portion provided in the previous sentence? Um, a collection of written by people who use them? Uh, not really. <laughs> no, not really A or B, right? Yeah, I think it's he should he should not delete it then. I, we've got to look at C and D. Right? Does that yeah. make sense? Why? I mean, I always start with your first instinct, but if you read the answer choices and they don't satisfactorily explain why something should be added or taken away, then then look at the other two, right? And I think we have to look at C and D now. Go ahead and read read right. um, read, and I'm gonna I'm gonna delete them. Or, uh, okay. Go ahead and read C for me, please. All right. No, because the underlined portion defines a term that is important to the passage. Does the underlined portion define a term that is important to the passage? Uh, I think it does because it, it kind of points back to the title that it's a collection of recipes handwritten by the people who use them. Yeah, do you know what a manuscript recipe book is? Or like, did you, before reading that definition, did you know if I said, oh, I've got a collection of manuscript recipe books, would you know what I'm talking about? Um, I think so. I mean, I know you yeah. know what a recipe book is, but would you know I'm talking about like handwritten copies of recipes handwritten by the people who use them? Would you know that? Um, I could probably infer what I know what you're talking about, but okay. not. I don't think I've ever like seen one before. Yeah, but well, that's not the question, right? I'm like, would you would you know what I meant if I said a manuscript recipe book? Maybe you'd be able to uh, figure yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. um, let's try his choice D. Okay, so no, because the under underlying portion gives an example of particular culinary artifacts. Okay, does the underlying portion give an example of a particular culinary artifact? No. No. It doesn't, right? It just defines what manuscript writing books are. So it can't be D. Yep. Guess what the Must answer be C. is? Yeah. It's C. It's C. How clear is that? If we just directly address the question and test the, test each answer choice on its own merits. Right? Yeah. Like, you don't have to, like, don't read A through D and then be like, oh, which one is it? Oh, that one. You know? No, 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 no. Like, okay, A, does it do that? Well, no, it doesn't do that. Okay, does it do B? No, it doesn't do that, right? We can eliminate them on their own merits. Yeah. Make sense? And then you're yes, thinking sir. very clearly about them. Great job. It is answer choice C. Um, Ava, let's just take it. We've already read the last sentence. Let's just take it from 35, because of. Because of the astonishing size and range of size Marie's <laughs> Do, donation to the University of Iowa, making this corner, corner, 
I, I cornucopia. Think so. Cornucopia. And it means an abundance of something. Yeah. Um, cornucopia of information available to the reader was a challenge. Okay. Look at the uh, answer choices for thirty-five. Do you know what uh, what rule we've been tested on here? Uh, it's the. Uh, Transition one again. It is transition words. Yeah, absolutely. Now again, this for uh, you know, in general, it's still true. We've seen a number of examples where it's not been the case, but in general, it's true. You'll 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 see the sentence before, and the sentence with the transition word. That's where the two ideas being connected are. That's not the case here. The two ideas being connected are in the same sentence. Okay, so I want you to read um, the first half of the sentence without the transition word, and then read the second half of the sentence. Um, as it is, and uh, we'll see if we can figure out the relationship between those two ideas. So take from the astonishing size. The astonishing size and range of Sassenary's donation to the University of Iowa, okay. making this... Go ahead, and the next corna corna Cornucopia. <laughs> Thank you, I'm sorry. Cornucopia of information available to the readers was a challenge. Okay, so we've got the astonishing size and range of the donation, and then making this... Cornucopia of information available to readers was a challenge. What is the relationship between those two ideas? It's cause and effect. That sounds pretty good, right? Because it was so big, I guess, making that information available to readers was a challenge. Does that make sense? Yes. That's pretty good. Um, let's look at the other answer choices. Can we eliminate any other answer choices? Um, I guess in addition to doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't there. Now, here, here's the terms I want you to think in, though. Do we see any other answer choices that are of the same relationship? In uh, B and C are the same relationship? Absolutely, right? Those are both what relationship? The contrast. Right? Contrast, right? Both are, absolutely. Both B, B and C are contrast. D would be like a similarity relationship, and A is cause and effect. And it is cause and effect here. There's no question about it, right? Because it's so big, it's tough to make this information available to readers. All right, it's not a similarity relationship. So it is A. Questions about that? No. No? Okay. Nope. Now, again, there's a little, I mean, you got to, you know, you got to identify the two ideas being connected. Okay, and again, there's no sentence before this one in the paragraph, so you know you're going to have to look at it from another perspective. Sometimes the two ideas are in the same sentence. It's true. But it's still the same method other than reading the sentence before. You've got to read the two ideas being connected. Again, generally, I'd say probably about 70% of the time, maybe 75% of the time or 80% or, or of the time even, um, it's in two separate sentences. Here, though, we've seen like three in a row where on this practice test, for whatever reason, where they're, they're both the, you know, the two ideas are in the same sentence. Be aware, we'll see it a lot more frequently in two separate sentences. Okay, um, let's answer. You know, you did, uh, why don't you do 36 again for me, Ava, because you, you read that sentence already. Uh, because of the astonishing size and range of Sass Murray's donation to the University of Iowa, making this corn cornucopia of information available to readers is a challenge. So, um... Uh, A is no change. Yeah. Um, what rule are we being tested on here? The, uh, look at the answer choices. If you're not sure what rule are being tested on, take a look at the answer choices and ask yourself how they're different. Uh... Is it um, keeping it simple? It's absolutely Maybe. keeping it simple. How did you know that? Uh, because B and C are kind of the same thing. Yeah, they're the same thing, just really wordy. Right? Like a, B, and C. Like, they're all saying generally the same thing. They just say it with more words. Right? What's the right mm -hmm. answer? Uh, probably D. It's D, yeah. How easy is that when you recognize you're being tested and keep it simple? Yeah. So. yeah, the correct answer is extremely easy. Yeah. Uh, 
I love Keep It Simple. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, and they tested a lot. But yeah, they've already identified. We already know it's the University of Iowa. They've established that. We know it's culinary artifacts. We know they're. Co we know. We know all these things. You've already told us. Right? There's just nothing added by repeating that unnecessarily repetitive information. Okay. Questions? Nope. Nope. All right. This is all making sense to everyone. Yes. Great. I can't ask for anything better. Let's uh, let's get some more done. Um, Caroline, you are next. Working in conjunction. Okay. Uh, working in, in conjunction with the library, the University of Iowa Press published volumes as varied as the PEO cookbook written in rural Iowa in 1908 and Lady Borley's Recipes cookie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Written in the English countryside from 1665 to 18, 1822. Librarians were happy to show the Zav Mary's collection to people who were able to visit the library. So the manuscripts, too delicate to be checked out to the library patrons, remained largely unexplored. Hmm. Hmm. This is maybe not obvious, but this is a transition word question. But the two ideas once again on this practice test, for whatever reason, <laughs> are in the same sentence. So let's read the first half of the sentence, and then the second half of the sentence without the transition word. Okay. Okay. So just completely take it from out. yeah librarians and then yeah yep okay librarians were happy to show the Zev Mary's collection to people who were able to visit the library. The manuscripts too delicate to be checked out to the library patrons remained largely unexplored. Hmm. What's the relationship between those two ideas? Similarity, contrast, cause and effect, or providing examples? Um. I don't. That's that's an honest answer, and I appreciate it. What do you guys think, Blaze, Ava? Any thoughts? Um, I I think it would be D, but because it's kind of a contrast. What's the contrast? I agree with you. What's the contrast? Um, it's basically saying um, that they weren't able to visit this part of the library, the South Mary collection. Oh, you know the the manuscripts because or. Wait, what was I trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> Librarians were happy to show the South American collection to people who were able to visit the library, but the manuscripts, too delicate to be checked out to library patrons, remain largely unexplored. Yeah. It kind of it sounds correct if you read it in that context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so the contrast, right? And this is why I, I want you to think of these terms, right? I mean, if it's similar, you should be able to tell me what the similarity is. If it's cause and effect, you should be able to tell me what was causing what, right? If it's contrast, which it is here, you should tell me, okay, what's the contrast? And the contrast is that the librarians want to share it, but the manuscripts are too delicate to be checked out, so nobody read it. Mm -hmm. Right? They want to share it, but they couldn't. That's contrast. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. 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 It's definitely answer choice B. But think of those terms, by the way, whenever you're like, oh, I think it's similarity, but right? well, you've got to identify, you got to be able to explain what the similarity is. And if you can't, it might not be similarity. Or if you can't tell me what's causing what, it might not be cause and effect. Okay? Okay. All right. Blaze, you're up. Alrighty. So <clears throat> this all started to change in 2012 when the university expanded its do-it-yourself history project. Okay. Well, I already <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're good, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. To include the manuscripts, the project enlists volunteers to transcribe the recipes. Working from our home computers, the volunteers typed up scanned handwritten recipes. Hmm. What do you think about answer choice A? No change there. No, no change. Uh, the project is all dears to transcribe the recipes working from our home computers. Um, I guess it, I guess it, it didn't sound bad. Okay. So I, I wouldn't eliminate that yeah, yeah. right off the bat. Um, hmm. Working from his or her home computers. That doesn't really sound. That doesn't sound good. No. Um, working from their home computers to ah oh, yeah, I think I think so far C is probably the yeah. best option. Plug in D. 
Okay. Um, the project analyst volunteers to transcribe the recipes. Working from one's home computers, <laughs> the volunteers typed up the scanned handwritten recipes. I think D should be eliminated. Yeah, that'd be right. What's better, A or C? Uh, C. Yeah, it's definitely C. Um, this is just choosing the right word in context. I guess maybe possessives potentially, but you really right. Whose home computers are we talking about here? Who's home computer? The, vol the volunteers. The volunteers, right? And so we know we need a plural form of the possessive. So we know it's not D. That's you know singular one, and his or her is singular two. So it's either A or C, and it yeah. can't be out. We're not referring to. I mean, there's, it's not we, it's not us. So let's see. And it sounds the best on top of it all, which is great. Even if, that, if that's as far as you get, it's like which one sounds the best? That's still not terrible for a question like this. At least you'd probably be right. It does sound the best, but now you also know why. Ava, next sentence. We are going to finish this practice test. I think. <laughs> let's read. After a page is transcribed and proofread, it is digitized and becomes part of a searchable online archive. Volunteer transcribers need to no particular expertise. Prosaic. Directives are pro provided on the DIY history website. Mm -hmm. What does prosaic mean? That's a great question. Uh, do you know what prose is? It's like uh, like a story, but like written without Yeah, poetry. written, and it's generally contrasted with verse, right? Verse would be like poetry. Prose is like more common language. And so prosaic mm -hmm. would mean like common or simple okay okay <clears throat> um volunteer transcribers need no particular expertise prosaic directives are provided um simple directions are provided uh bare bones how to <laughs> not that yeah one. yeah that's <laughs> awful <laughs> wow <laughs> thank you I also think fast hell protocols. Yeah, that's pretty weird right. too. That ain't right. Uh, <laughs> What's better, A or B? Um, simple directions is probably the best. Yeah, what rule is this? Um, it's like the it's the the common like talk one. I'm sorry, but um, the yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Normally, I say keep it simple. But I think maybe make a match style and tone is even better, right? Like, it's, there's, there's just, like, fancy vocab words you just don't need. I mean, it's just silly. B works. B works. So I'd maybe keep it simple is, is maybe the best way to understand. But it's just, yeah, the bare bones how to. No. Oh, boy. That's, they're so bad. Oh, that's so bad. All right. Um, yes, it is B. Caroline, transcribing is easy. Okay. Um, transcribing is easy. The ingredients, one recipe requires something, something called a ring on root and measurements, a ditto of baking soda. Moreover, can be puzzling. Should I keep reading? <laughs> no, we need to answer 40. Yeah. Um, this is a transition word question. And finally, this does go back to the, what's going to be the standard, which is you got two sentences that were you've got two different ideas. Okay. Now here's the deal. So we're going to read the first sentence, which is transcribing is easy. Then I want you to read the second sentence, but don't worry about the stuff in the parentheses. That's just not essential to the meaning of, to the main point of the sentence. They're not. Okay. So read the second sentence without the transition word and without the stuff in parentheses. Does that make sense? Yes. But I want to hear them right at one right after the other. So take it from transcribing is easy. Okay. Transcribing is easy. The ingredients and measurements, moreover, can be puzzling. Ah, but you got to read it without the transition word. So take it again. Oh, okay, sorry. Transcribing is easy. The ingredients and measurements can be puzzling. What's the relationship there between those two ideas? Um, is it contrast? It's absolutely contrast, right? One thing is easy, one thing's confusing, right? Mm -hmm. Do you see the contrast there? Yes. What's the right answer? Um, it's C, isn't it? Yeah, it's the only contrast one. Absolutely. Okay. However, plug it in. I want to hear it. Okay. Transcribing is easy. The ingredients and measurements, however, can be puzzling. How's that sound? That sounds great. Perfect. Perfect. 
All right. You see how useful that method is? Yes. If you can find the two, you got to find the two ideas being, being, um, you know, that, that you're transitioning uh, from. Or, or, yeah, that are being compared. But uh, once you find the two ideas, generally, again, two different sentences. The first sentence can be before and the, then the sentence with the transition words, the second one. But um, once you find those two ideas, then just read them one right after the other. And you've got to ignore what's in the transition word, or, you know, the, the, the underlined portion. You can't you can't read it because if you do it, it's already kind of setting up your mind for like for uh, the, the, the relationship that the transition word in the underlined portion suggests. And you, you don't want to think in those terms. So perfect job there. Blaze. Alrighty. The goal is to digitize the manuscripts in this in the South Mary collection, making them available to anyone with access of a computer and the internet. Okay, uh, this is definitely like a the similar sound yeah word yeah Action, and yeah. simple grammar yeah. Um, so it would be be access to yeah. That's it. I mean, it's not X. We're not talking about extra of anything. It's not those. Yeah. And then A is A sounds bad too, right? It's not access of a computer. It's access to a computer. Come on, yeah. right? Yeah. That's where just going with your gut and going with your ear there, and it's just like, come on, that's easy. That's, that's yeah. easy. Well done. We're going to finish this, I think. All right, um, Ava. The library is working hard to publicize the project and encourage the public to try the recipes. It has formed a club dedicated to cooking manuscript recipes. Some recipes don't fare well in the 21st century. Her 1800s gingerbread uh, molasses Aladdin brick, while others had just had worked just fine. Mm. What rule are they testing us on here for number 42? Um, the the um, tense. Yeah, make it match tense. Let's read this one again, but without the parentheses. I love cutting out parentheses. Um, read it again without the parentheses. Some recipes don't fare well in the 21st century, while others had worked just fine. Uh, I think it's it's B, right? It's B, yeah, absolutely. Because it's um, present tense. It's present tense, that's it. Everybody picks C for this one, if you read it with the parentheses, right? One club member called her 1800s gingerbread. A molasses laden brick, right? They're like, oh, past tense. No, 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 no. I mean, that's just an aside. Don't worry about that. It's some recipes don't fare well, present tense, right now. Well, others work just fine. It's got to be present. Is that clear? Yes. All right. I love cutting out yes. the parentheses. Very, very useful. All right. Um, Caroline? Yes. Um, okay. Ahead. So, in another instance, of library outreach, a competition at the 2013 Iowa State Fair. Contestants baked desserts in three categories, almond cheesecake, summer mince pie, and Marlboro pie, using recipes from the Zaff Mary collection. What rule are they testing us on here? Um, I'm actually not sure. Look at the answer choices and ask how they're different. Is it like the commas? Yeah, just commas. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you um, read them? Read all the answer choices. Okay. Well, read, read, read the part like inside the the M dashes, the double M dash. Right. By the way, nice use of the double M dash there. Right? We've got a list. We've got three categories. Right. So read the um, uh, part in between the M dashes. And if there's a comma there, take a pause. Okay. So, which one? Should I read A? Start okay. with A. Yeah, we're going to go through all of okay. them. Almond cheesecake, summer mince pie, and Merle Burl, Burl pie. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Um, almond cheesecake, summer mince, and Merle Burl pie. <laughs> How's that? That's not right. <laughs> no. Although I love the idea of Cheesecake Summer. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds so wonderful. Like the title of a poem or something like that, that I would love to read. Or maybe a dessert I would like to eat. <laughs> Try this Cheesecake Summer. But it's not a thing, right? B's gone. Okay. When, you, when you giggle at an answer choice is generally not a good thing, <laughs> right? Okay. Um, almond Cheesecake Summer, Mince Pie, and Merlot Pie. That's also not right. Yeah, it's also not right. Although, um, Cheesecake Summer sounds pretty good, too. Not a thing. 
Um, almond, cheesecake, summer, mince, and Marlboro pie. That's not right. That's not right. Why not? Because, for one, there's like too many. Yeah, there's too many categories, right? We've, we've got three categories. And that's like five categories. It's not to say. Yeah. We're going to finish this. 44, Blaze. Reed, start with question. Alrighty, so the writer plans to add the following sentence to this paragraph. The judges reported that the entries were delicious. Mm. So to make this paragraph most logical, the sentence should be placed. Okay. After sentence Alrighty. one. Let's do the sentence sandwich method. Right? So you're gonna read so if after sentence one, you read sentence one, then the sentence in question, and then sentence two. Okay? Okay. Alright. Let's do sentence one. Okay. So the library is working hard to public publish this up. Publicize, ah, publicize, publicize, publicize the project and encourage the public to try these recipes. And then it, the judges reported that the entries were delicious. And then sentence two. Okay, that sounds okay. It has formed a club dedicated to cooking to the cooking manuscript recipes. The judges reported that the entries were. Whoa, delicious. whoa, stop, 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 stop. So it's after sentence one is what we're testing. So oh, whoops, you read okay, sentence one, then the sentence in question, then sentence two. I want to hear it all in order. Right. Okay. Okay. So the library is working hard to publicize the project and encourage the public to try the recipes. You want me to just keep going through one through four? Well, just, just, I want to hear that one, then the sentence in question, and then two. I want to, did, did, what did you think of answer choice A, by the way, after sentence? Um, a? it sounded, it sounded okay. Plus, I want to hear the, okay, then you got to, I want to hear them all together. The, the, the three sentences. I want to hear. Oh, okay. Yeah, they've got to be with, in order with that one sentence. Yeah. In. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the library is working hard to publicize the project and encourage the public to try the recipes. The judges reported that the entries were delicious. It has formed a club dedicated to cooking manuscript recipes. How does that sound? Recipe. Um, it sounded okay. Okay. I think. Okay. Let's keep it then. Let's keep answer choice A. Try after sentence two. Okay. So. So two. The library the sentence and question number three. Okay. It has formed a club dedicated to cooking manuscript recipes. The judges reported that the entries were delicious. Some recipes don't fare well in the 21st uh, century, uh, while others work just fine. How was B? Um, it was not as good as one, I don't think. Okay. Let's get rid of it. Try C after sentence three. After sentence three. Okay. Uh, if I do, okay. so some, rec some recipes don't fare well in the 21st centuries, while others work just fine. The judges reported that the entries were delicious. In another instance of library outreach, a competition at the tw 2013 Iowa State Fair, contestants baked desserts in three. Um, in three categories. Oh, wait. Oh, three categories. Whoops. Yeah. In three. Oops. Okay. In three categories. Uh, almond cheesecake, almond cheesecake, summer mince pie, and Marlboro pie, using recipes from the South American collection. Um, <laughs> dang, I'm not really sure. Okay. Can't eliminate it. Let's leave it. Okay, yeah. Let's try after sets four. Okay. In another instance of uh, of library outreach, a competition at the 2013 Iowa State Fair, contestants baked desserts in three categories. Almond cheesecake, summer mince pie, and Marlboro pie, using recipes from the South Mary collection. The judges reported that the entries were delicious. Um, okay, yeah, that actually sounds the best. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, one is bad, man. Yeah, one is bad. <laughs> yeah, it's real bad. It is D. Okay, relatively clear though, using the sentence sandwich method, right? And with a little practice, it gets it gets easier. Okay. Any questions? Nope. No? Nope. We did it. We did it. Great. All right. For your homework, I'm going to send uh, the email out um, sometime soon with the links to the videos. Uh, I'm going to send a link to another PSAT practice test. Just do all the writing section. We'll try to get through as much of that as we can. But uh, I think you're going you're to see by the end of this, you're going to be like, I know, okay, I know the rule. I know what that is. I know exactly, you're going to know exactly what to do. You're going to have it down. It's a very, very limited skill set. So, you guys are doing great. I'm so pleased. Okay. Any questions? Nope. No. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, um, great. If you got questions, feel free to reach out to me. But otherwise, I look forward to seeing you next week. And um, yeah, I'll look forward to seeing you then. Okay. Thank Have a great you. Easter, guys. Okay.
Thank you. You Thanks too. Thanks so much. Bye. All right. Bye.